In just under six months, the 2022 FIFA World Cup will get underway in Qatar. This tournament is being held in the Middle East for the first time, and Qatar has built eight impressive mega stadiums to host this massive tournament. One of the stadiums is designed like a traditional Middle Eastern woven cap. Another is made of shipping containers, and one venue has infamously been likened to a woman's private parts. While they are striking in design, the eight venues pose a logistical relief to the fans attending arguably the most controversial World Cup ever. Qatar is home to less than 3 million people, and it is the smallest country to ever host a World Cup, so the legacy of the tournament has to be managed carefully. If you add up the total costs, taking into account not only the cost of building new stadiums and renovating existing ones, but also all the money spent on infrastructure, this year's World Cup is by far the most expensive of all time. Qatar has reportedly amassed astronomical costs of around $220 billion. By contrast, the cost of the 2006 World Cup in Germany was only at a minuscule $4.3 billion. But it must be taken into account that the costs associated with the new stadiums in Qatar are only in the order of $7 to $10 billion. The bulk of the spending is infrastructure-related costs, which are part of the broader Qatar 2030 plan. The stadiums are all situated within a 21-mile radius of central Doha and will be linked by a metro and tram system, making it possible to watch more than one game in the same day for any fan wishing to do so. With high summer temperatures, each stadium is equipped with solar-powered cooling technology to keep the temperature at 27 degrees Celsius. All stadiums are eco-friendly and their temperature will be controllable. The tournament organizers have pledged to build stadiums with modular elements, which will be reconfigured after the tournament to provide a lasting legacy for the World Cup far beyond Qatar's borders. Only one stadium will be called home to a football team afterwards. One other stadium will be dismantled altogether while six of the remaining venues will have half their seats taken up and sent to developing countries to help improve their sports infrastructure. With this step, as many as 22 new stadiums will be created in emerging economies. With all that said, now let's take a closer look at the eight stadiums and their unique designs. Number 1. Luzel Stadium The showpiece stadium for the tournament that will host the opening fixture and the final as well as other key matches is Luzel Stadium. This stadium was designed by Foster and Partners and it can accommodate up to 80,000 spectators, which is the highest capacity out of all stadiums. Its design has been inspired by the Fanner Lantern that is characterized by its interplay of light and shadow. Luzel's shape and facade echo the intricate decorative motifs on bowls and other vessels, characteristic of the golden age of art and craftsmanship in the Arab and Islamic world. The stadium was opened this year very much behind schedule and it is 10 miles away from the Doha city center. At the end of the tournament, most of the seats will be removed and donated to developing countries as the new city of Luzel will not need its own football stadium after 2022. Number 2. Al Bayt Stadium One of the larger stadiums, the Al Bayt Stadium will stage matches right through to the semi-finals of the competition. It is set to host nine matches, and will be the stage for the opening ceremony and opening match between hosts Qatar and Ecuador. This stadium has the second highest capacity, accommodating 60,000 spectators. The arena is designed to represent Arab hospitality with the structure looking like a traditional Arab tent known as Beit al-Shar. The stadium's design honors Qatar's past and present, while being a model of green development and sustainability. Because temperatures in Qatar can top 30 degrees Celsius even in November, it will also have a retractable roof to keep out the heat. Located 27 miles from away from the city center, it is the furthest stadium from Doha, but fans not wanting to leave can stay in its plush five-star hotel and experience the luxury amenities at its shopping center, which will be opened at the venue. Number 3. Al Janoub Stadium 
The futuristic design of the Al Janoub Stadium is inspired by the sails of the Dow boats traditional to the country of Qatar and a nod to the coastal city's maritime heritage. It boasts a retractable roof and an innovative cooling system to ensure the ground can hold events all year round, even during the searing heat of the summer months. It was designed by the world-renowned late British Iraqi architect, Zaha Hadid. The funny thing about this stadium is when Hadid's design was first released and went viral, commentators suggested the stadium looked more like a woman's private parts. Al Janoub Stadium was the first of the World Cup stadiums to be completed back in the summer of May 2019, and it has a capacity of 40,000. Number 4. Stadium 974 In a first for the World Cup, this stadium has been made from 974 shipping containers and other modular steel elements, echoing the nearby port and the industrial history of the plot. Due to the upcycled materials used, the stadium can easily be dismantled after the tournament finishes. The stadium's clever modular design meant that fewer normal building materials were required than in traditional stadium development, which helped keep construction costs down. Stadium 974 is the only waterfront venue with a spectacular view of the Doha skyline. The result is a distinctive, boldly colorful and thoroughly modern arena. The concept of the stadium was designed by Fenwick Urbaran Architects. Number 5. Education City Stadium This stadium is right inside the Qatar Foundation just outside the center of Doha, which is well known around the world. Hosting six matches through to the quarterfinals, the Education City Stadium is set to become the home of the national women's team after the World Cup. The stadium takes the shape of a diamond and will be nicknamed the Diamond in the Desert as it is designed to glisten by day and glow at night. The facade of the stadium features triangles that form complex diamond-like geometrical patterns which appear to change color with the sun's movement across the sky. Like diamonds, the stadium's design represents quality, durability and resilience, and will become something to be treasured, both for the memories it holds and its future value to the country. Number 6. Ahmed Ben Ali Stadium This stadium, which also underwent a name change after initially being called the Al Ryan Stadium, will host seven matches up until the quarter-final stage and is meant to be a reflection of Qatari culture. The facade features intricate patterns representing the country of Qatar, from its wildlife to its history of trade. The ground is in proximity to the desert, so the hospitality areas and merchandise stalls outside the ground will be shaped to resemble sand dunes. Located in Al Ryan, the stadium was built on the site of the old ground with the majority of construction materials reused to erect the Ahmed Bin Ali Stadium. Number 7. Al Thulama Stadium this stadium is inspired by the Gafia, a traditional woven cap worn by men across the Middle East, and it's easy to see in pictures of the stadium. The Gafia forms a fundamental layer of the traditional clothing of the region. It is also a symbol of dignity and independence. This is the first World Cup venue to be designed by a Qatari architect, Ibrahim al Jaida. With a capacity of 40,000, the stadium will host a total of eight matches during the World Cup. After the tournament, the stadium will half its capacity, donating the seats to developing countries. The remaining 20,000-seat arena will be used for football and other sporting events. A sports clinic will open on site, as well as a boutique hotel, which will replace the stadium's upper stands. The precinct surrounding the stadium will become a community hub with facilities for multiple sports. There will also be a number of retail and commercial units created to ensure the area becomes a bustling hub of exercise and activity. Number 8. Khalifa International Stadium This was one of the only stadiums to have been opened before the World Cup was awarded to Qatar, with it initially built in 1976. It also hosted the Amir Cup final in May last year in front of 40,000 spectators. 
It has been the country's national stadium since it opened and has been extensively renovated to host the World Cup this year. In 2005, the stadium was renovated and expanded to serve as the centerpiece of the 2006 Asian Games hosted by Qatar. It has also hosted the Gulf Cup, the AFC Asian Cup and the IAAF World Athletics Championships in 2019. The stadium, which includes sweeping arcs and partially covered stands, is the centerpiece of Aspire Zone, a sports complex that includes the Aspire Academy for Sports Excellence and many other sporting venues. Attached to the stadium via walkway is the 321 Qatar Olympic and Sports Museum, adding to the appreciation of how this venue cherishes its past as it builds towards an exciting future. Like any other mega construction project, these stadium projects have also undergone its share of criticism and controversy. The World Cup in Qatar has come under international criticism not only for its high cost, but above all for human rights violations. Thousands of workers have reportedly died due to dangerous working conditions while building the stadiums. Due to these allegations, there is an ongoing debate in many countries about whether or not to watch the World Cup. Recently, most big cities in France decided against broadcasting the games in public on big screens due to human rights violations and environmental impacts of the stadiums. Now that the tournament is just days away and Qatar is all prepped to host the games, it is highly unlikely that the decision to hold the games in Qatar will be reversed. What are your thoughts on these stadium projects? Leave your comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.